Our app almost looks good, but we've got to move that big ugly button in the center of the screen, and we want our answer text to float perfectly in the middle of the crystal ball. Our screen has a base view group called a relative layout, and all of our views, like the image view for the background, the text view for the answer, and the button are all positioned inside this relative layout. Relative layouts, as we might guess from the name, allow us to position elements relative to the layout itself and also relative to other elements inside the layout. Let's dive in to see how it all works. There are lots of ways to customize the appearance of a button, like using a custom image or creating what is called a nine patch image that scales well across devices. For now though, we'll just stick to the attributes we can change here in the graphical layout editor. Make sure activity main.xml is open, and then we'll start by moving our apps button down to the bottom of the screen. Click on it and hold the mouse button down as you drag it to the bottom of the layout, letting go once the left and bottom sides are highlighted with solid green bars. Notice that the properties align parent left and align parent bottom are displayed as equal to true. This means that our button will be anchored to the lower left corner of the screen. Changing the background color of a button involves more than just simply picking a new color, so we'll cover that another time. Google's Android design guidelines suggest that buttons and any other controls a user can touch should provide a visual response to let the user know which object was touched and that the app is listening. Check out this example button down here. It shows five different states the button can be in. Now, if we look at our button in the emulator, we can see the default settings make our button change color from gray to orange. So let's keep our button as the default for now, but at least we'll change up the text a little bit. With the button selected, take a look at the properties view here on the right. The text of our button is actually represented by a text view, and all the properties for the text view are here under the text view heading. In fact, the button class in Android is what is known as a subclass of the text view class. In object-oriented programming, this means that the button is a specialized version of a text view. It has all the same properties and methods of a text view, plus its own properties and methods layered on top that make it behave like a button. Subclassing like this allows objects to reuse components from other classes. That means we can use some of the same code or make changes in the same way for both text views and buttons. All right, let's start by bumping up the size of the text on our button. In the text size property, type 24SP. Remember that SP stands for Scale Independent Pixels, and this is the unit we want to use whenever we're sizing text in Android apps. Now below this is the typeface property, where you can select one of four choices. Let's select serif, and then in the text style property, let's check both bold and italic. Click OK. And now you can see the enlightened me text has a little more pizzazz to it. The last thing we'll change is the color of the text. Unfortunately, Android currently only has a few very basic color options defined, so it's up to us to define our own. In the text color property, let's clear out the value in there. And then if I type at Android colon color, we can see a list of the colors defined by Android, which isn't very good. Instead, we're going to type a color in hexadecimal format. If you haven't used colors in this format before, don't worry, it's just a way of representing them that computers easily understand. Type in a pound sign, followed by 3F, 0F, 7F. This gives us a nice purple that matches our background of the crystal ball. You can include custom fonts and integrate them with your app as well, but that's a more advanced topic for the future. Later on, we'll replace this button with the ability to shake the device to get an answer, just like a real crystal ball. But this is good enough for now, so let's move on to the answer that appears in the crystal ball. It helps to put in some placeholder text when we're trying to position things, so let's click on text view one in the outline, and then in the text property, type in one of the longest answers from the array in crystalball.java. I'm going to type better not to tell you now. It's helpful to use a long response because it will help us make sure that everything fits properly and lines up correctly. Our text view is anchored to the center of the screen, and the crystal ball in our background image is also centered, so the two should match up nicely on any screen. But the text inside our text view is currently aligned to the left. Under the text view heading in the properties view, scroll down to the gravity property, and then click on the box to the right with the ellipses. Select Center Horizontal, click OK, and now our text is centered inside the text view. 
Let's do one more thing. Let's brighten our text and add a shadow effect to make it look more like it's floating inside the crystal ball. Scroll up a little here in the properties and change the text color to Android white. Click on the box and type at Android colon color slash white. This is the default white defined by Android. Now scroll down to the shadow color and type in the same thing, at Android colon color slash white. We're going to create a blurry highlight effect by using a shadow of the same color as the text. In the shadow radius property, type 10. This will create a white shadow around our text, which will make it look like it's glowing and floating inside the crystal ball. Now here you see a message that the preview does not currently support showing shadow effects, so we're going to have to run our app to see these in action. Before we do that though, let's delete that placeholder text we've been using. Right click on the text, select edit text, and then click on the clear button at the bottom. Okay, let's save our changes and run our app. Okay, if we tap our pretty button here at the bottom, we can see the shadow effect on our nicely centered text in the crystal ball. But for some of the longer answers, notice that the text stretches outside of the crystal ball, which kind of ruins the illusion that it's floating in there. Let's fix that next.